so uh i don't plan these things before that's why you get a lot of the so us before um i keep thinking that i'm gonna have something to say and have it points like in my mind that i gotta go over but then as soon as i hit play that red button there um it just all goes blank so anyways uh i went garage selling um as i do every weekend in the summer and uh i didn't find any vinyl records so for all the guys and ladies who watch for vinyl stuff this ain't the video for you it just isn't sadly i didn't get any records uh this week uh, when i was garage selling or none came into the store to buy either which is kind of thing but uh you know what i did get some cool stuff in fact i got one thing that is amazing um and it's so good that a guy followed me <laughs> from uh one garage sale to another and then uh out to my car and asked me if he could buy it um so i'll show you that in a minute uh since there might be some new people looking at this uh instead of all the vinyl heads um i'll introduce myself again uh my name is jay i have been a reseller on ebay since 1998 i kind of specialize in paper ephemera on there so it's uh you know i do hard goods and collectibles as well um i have owned a uh, vintage retail store since you know it's 20 years this is probably i think this might be my 20th year 2004 I think I opened. I can't remember, but it's, you know, a, a while, um, which you can see here around me in the background. There's lots of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I, generally that's the kind of content that I do on here is mostly um, my finds because that's fun. I do it because um, later on when I forget about things and keep thinking, oh man, you haven't found anything lately, I just kind of go back and look at these videos and be like, no, you're okay, you're finding good stuff, it's still all right. Um, you don't have to, you know, start flipping burgers yet. Yet. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you the stuff that I did get this weekend. It is uh, some vintage glass pieces, some, um, well, I guess just one piece, and then some vintage toys, and then some beer stuff which is kind of fun beer and pop stuff so i'll show that uh now okay so i figured i would start with this and get it out of the way because it is uh, a large piece and i am in the photo booth area um of the store where i take my pictures for online stuff and as you can see um space is limited but the lighting's okay so i just go with that but um yeah this was um at a garage sale just sitting there it's from ideal uh toy company of canada because i'm in canada ontario and um these are the same guys who made the uh, plastic rebound game and obviously they had a lot of success with that so they wanted to uh, capitalize on that and they came up with this bowling game same kind of yellow mustard yellow plastic um but uh, an exceptionally cool game. Now, I bought this. It was $5. Um, the box is rough, obviously, but it's there. And this is from 1973. And what else has survived from 1973 that you have? Um, so the remarkable thing about this is it had all the pins. And uh, both of the balls you were supposed to have. It's called snap bowling because you took this red ball right here. Um, and it's got holes in it there they are you put elastic band through that and then you would put your bowling ball in there and you pull the elastic band back and it hits and then your ball goes and knocks them down super simple idea um and uh but tons of entertainment my son actually loves the rebound game uh he's eight and when i brought it home that one became part of the family collection um and we play that quite often he thinks it's great and uh he also saw this and wants to probably claim this too but we'll see what happens um the great thing about this is it came with paperwork those are the actual um ideal put these little uh, scoring sheets and there's a small stack of them the uh there is instructions there it's a little worse for the wear on that one but at least it's still there this will clean up it looks a bit rough now but it probably was never clean in its life it was just a toy um comps on it are around i don't know probably in this shape 50 bucks um i've seen them as high as uh, 65 uh, on ebay plus shipping um again those are american prices and i paid five dollars canadian for this which is like for my american friends like i don't know 
four bucks. So yeah, pretty happy with this deal overall. Um, now I'm going to clear this off and show you the other stuff I got. So this is a pretty special piece. Um, it is a hazel atlas, probably 1930s depression era glass. Um, it is uranium glass. And I'm going to show you what that means for those who don't know in a little bit. Um, there's the patent pending on the uh, bottom. doesn't actually have uh, hazel atlas markings on this one, but it is hazel atlas. It's a little measuring cup. You can see them there all the way along there and then the nice part is it has its original it was like a beater cup so it has its original thing that just sits on there loosely and turns and um yeah it's got uh, patent information on there october 9th 1920 for this part so yeah probably earlier than the 30s then um really nice graphics has a very art deco styling uh post deco styling with the uh, feet on the bottom and this kind of cool I don't know what you call that, um, but very sort of skyscraper-ish um, from that era. So great look. I'm going to show you guys right now. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the lights for a second and show you what's super special about this. Okay, so clearly in the dark, nothing's happened to your TV. There you go. So when you shine a black light on uh, Vaseline glass, or the light's actually looking like it's going to burn out, um, it glows. Um, not all Vaseline glass has this, and some milk glass has this. It's because there is uranium in this. Very minimal amounts. Unless you're eating like three of these things a day, um, you're never going to get sick from it. Um, it. It is such a special thing. And what I've seen now is more and more people are um, buying old storage cabinets uh, and corner cabinets and sticking black light uh bars inside them and then putting their collection on display with the lights off and it looks amazing when you've got a whole bunch of them in there so it was kind of added um special bonus to that okay lights back on and so uh the story behind this one is is that i bought it and i i knew it was a good piece i didn't know how you know good um but it was sort of confirmed by me because when i bought it um a guy followed me to the next garage sale I went to down the street and he followed me around and when I was leaving that garage sale he came over to me and said hey any chance you want to sell that green glass beater thingy that you bought and I said no because generally um you know if somebody's asking you there uh they're not going to give you the price that it's worth um, almost always. So I just, I never do that. I never am willing to sell to somebody else because you'll probably find out later that you missed out. And in this case, um, I'm glad I kept it. Uh, so yeah, the comps on these, if you look them up, it's, um, Hazel Atlas measuring cup. Uh, I, you know, those kind of words, uh, uranium glass, depression glass. Uh, you'll see a bunch of the sold comps on eBay sort of at, uh, 65, to 125 depending if it has its lid or not because that's the key this thing is often missing from it because people uh, when they get separated people don't realize um you know they would go together so it's in nice shape doesn't have a lot of cracks there's a bit of tarnish on there which i'll probably be able to shine up but a uh, really nice piece and i only paid five bucks for it so pretty happy with that um as you can see sitting behind it is a vintage Empire Strikes Back poster. Now, this is not an actual theater poster. Um, it would have been the ones that you bought in store. Um, so when you went to like your local department store, uh, those of a certain age, like me, uh, who grew up in the 70s and 80s, um, you will remember those big racks that had um, folding uh sort of frames like this actually it would have the posters in it and you could sort of flip through them and then it would have a number and below would be a rack with all the posters on it and you just match up the number and that was your poster and away you went um so these don't carry as much anywhere near the kind of value as the original uh theater things these actually don't survive that's the thing that i find um i actually find these store ones harder to uh, to find because Movie collectors collected movie posters, even back in the day. They've been a long-term collecting thing. Um, so they were kept around. But these that were pinned up in sort of boys' and girls' bedrooms, yeah, they got tossed. 
Um, and a lot of them, I find it much harder to actually find these in-store ones than I do the actual movie posters themselves um, from the theaters themselves. Uh, I love the graphic on this. It's one of my, it's like iconic. You've even got Boba Fett in there, which is just amazing. Um, my favorite movie of all time, perhaps. Not that you need to know that. This one is a bit rough. The, I think the reason why it was framed is because you can see the corners, which almost always on these are bit out a bit because they were pinned over and over again as they moved from room to room um and it has a bit of thing but somebody is going to want this it was i think five bucks if i recall that seems to me you can tell i have a trigger price so like if anybody says five bucks on anything i'm pretty much going for it at that point um so yeah this is amazing i'm probably going to hold on to this for a little while just you know nostalgia um, I'm a catch and release guy with a lot of stuff, so I will hold on to it for a while, and then eventually it'll probably make its way out to the store, but I'm pretty happy with this. I haven't looked up comps, but I mean, I gotta figure, just on general knowledge, I actually had a, a Darth Vader one, um, and a C-3PO and R2-D2 one that were in-store things, and I sold those in much rougher shape for $45 apiece, um, so I imagine this is probably gonna be in that area, um once i eventually do let it go so yeah don't sleep on any sort of posters from the 1990s and earlier um pick them up because a lot of times i think you'd be really surprised on what kind of value uh that a lot of these things carry they were ephemeral they got thrown out they were never sort of meant to be saved and again when people when parents uh, were clearing out uh little betty and little bobby's rooms when they went off to college these things went in the garbage. So what else did I grab this weekend? Um, a couple of hats. These are uh, just some trucker sort style. Well, actually, these are hunting hats. Uh, these are 1980s, 1970s. Uh, you can tell by the patches. They'll clean up. I usually get about 10 bucks a piece for those. And I, I paid literally less than a dollar a piece. This one is the nicest one out of them. Um, it's old Vienna uh, beer. It's corduroy. It does need a cleaning but it's got its shape. You can see this is the how they used to do the embroidery back in the day. You can see the paper still in there for it. But that's the key for us here in Canada because that one is made exclusively for brewers retail. So they used to sell these at the beer store. Um, for my American friends, until recently, you couldn't buy beer in a corner store. Um, we had a specific beer store that was um, run by um, <laughs> basically all the beer retailers got together and decided to uh, run it that way. And that way they would do all of their um, uh, sales in one spot. Wow, I'm really spacing out here. Uh, but yeah, it's blue corduroy. It's probably 1970s. Uh, that's a $25 hat, easy. Plus, I don't know, but I gotta clean it once I do that though. So yeah um give me a second because i just got to grab a few more things okay so here's some more stuff that i got sorry there i got distracted by some noises that were coming from outside of the store um but uh, i picked up some really nice fiberglass shades as well and these ones are in really good shape they don't have any breaks that i can see on them as you can see there the visible fibers um if you i have a lot of vintage lamps and the one thing that is always missing is the original shades um these guys throw off a pretty unique light i don't know if i can get that on there but you can see when you put it behind a bulb you can get that really great sort of fibery look to it um these are uh kind of getting tougher and tougher to find as i said a lot of them they over time they tend to get uh, they don't store very well uh they're not good in heat because they tend to warp and crack over time um and people are always looking for these so i paid i think it was 10 bucks for the pair um these i usually sell for anywhere for around something of this size probably 45 bucks maybe a bit more the smaller one is going to probably be in the 30 range again really nice shape the nice thing about these is they're not that discolored naturally they age a little yellow over time but often because these were from back in the day um smoking was involved in most households uh in the 50s and 60s which is you know this is probably 19 mid 1960s a little bit earlier than that um and uh they discolor with the smoke over time like nicotine the one thing about it is 
is that it totally, um, like secondhand smoke really did a ton of damage to a lot of stuff over time. So I've come across some great pieces that I just can't, uh, don't bother picking up because they're so yellowed. Uh, a few other things. These are in the package. Um, I think I've had some of these before. Uh, they're knockoffs, kind of like Power Ranger knockoffs. Um, they're 1990s, I believe. Um, and they're not worth a whole ton because they are knockoffs. Although now I've found that with the vintage toy market, uh, more and more people are starting to collect the uh, knockoffs because they're interesting. They're still pretty cool. They were usually in like your cheaper stores, like your corner dime stores and things like that. Dime stores. Wow, I do sound like. Um, and that's the back of the one there. And these ones actually lit up Sonic Rangers. Um, so those were pretty cheap. I think it was five bucks for all those. See my trigger word again. This came in a lot. The other stuff I just got rid of because there was nothing in there. But this is a, I believe, 1990 the Paper Bag Princess. And it's Robert Munch uh, from the uh, storybooks that he put out. And it's a doll. And everything's in there. A little booklet, the little doll, all that stuff. I haven't checked comps on it. But um, basically, it's 19, yeah, 1995. Uh, I, I would imagine it's probably close to the $40 mark. Um, it's got the box. The box is in great shape. Clearly, it's been taken out and played with. Um, but whenever you get uh, toys with their box, just and they're cheap enough, just pick them up. Um, what else we got here? Now, this is one that normally... <laughs> uh, it's a super slow seller. Um, but I'll show you down here. So the guy just had this thing and I was looking actually at these. These were, uh, in the 1990s, I believe. Might even be the 80s. Um, Coca-Cola put out these, uh, pop art, pop cans. And I've sold these for 10 bucks a piece before. Um, and, uh, in the store. And here's some more that were put out in this era. Um, but there's a different, there, I think there's just like a series of four with faces on them. And then they have these other ones here. And then there's some winter ones as well. This one is actually full, which is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know whether or not, uh, people ask me like, do you leave cans and bottles full when you find them? I do. I wouldn't ship them full. Uh, I sell them in the store like that. They let the next person decide what they want to do with it. Personally, I would, if I was collecting, I'd empty them out. And that way you don't have to worry ever about any stuff leaking. Um, but I looked at the box and he was like, you can have the box for like 10 bucks if you want for everything. And I'm like, all right. So again, super slow sellers, but they do sell over time. So if you have storage for things or items, or you have a retail store, that's great. Online, these do sell between 10 and $20 a piece, depending on what bottle is. These are Canadian um, stubby bottles, and they were um, uh, sold in the 70s, 80s. I think in the 90s, they phased them out. Um, I could be wrong, exactly wrong on that date, but these are a lot of what are considered classic beers. And guys who have their man cave type thing um, usually like to decorate with these. So again, there are, I don't know, there's Canadian. That one's got the cap on it. There's some interesting uh, 60s pop bottles in here too, like an early Fanta. Um, there's an O'Keefe's. And yeah, what else we got? There's some soda in here too, like Sioux City soda. I think that's like a later one. There's nothing super rare in here. Um, there's another one of those uh, Coca-Cola cans. There's another full one that's got a dent out of the side of it. Um, there's a Canadian that's full, but that's... But yeah, there's probably, I don't know, 20, 25 pieces in here in total, uh, including this little plastic... Labatt's blue uh, menu thing on there. Um, most of these I'm going to be selling in the $10 range. Probably stick them out front of the store. I've got an outdoor section uh, where people come and uh, pick things up. So it's kind of a no-brainer, really. You just do the math, like 10 bucks times 20. There's 300. I paid 10 bucks for the whole thing. Uh, 10 bucks times 20 is 300. Oh my God, clearly not a business person. I should not be in charge of anything that has anything to do with numbers. But you know what I'm saying. Um, there's over $200 worth of stuff here, I think. And, you know, for 10 bucks for the whole thing. Yeah, it'll take a while to sell, but um, that's the only thing I got. Time. Lots and lots 
and lots of time. So basically, that is it. Unfortunately, this week for me, the um, the thing that I love and collect the most, which is vinyl uh, records, I didn't get any. Uh, which, you know, it happens. To get all of this, now I know people see every week I put a video up with stuff. What they don't see is the um, the misses. To get this kind of stuff, I had to go to well over 30 different garage sales in a morning. Like, I'm up at 6, I'm on the road, I'm that annoying guy who's at your door at 7.30 when you said no early birds at 8. Um, and uh, I'm looking through stuff while you're setting up because I have to hit a whole bunch. Uh, I open the store up at 11 on the Saturdays, uh, and that's what I'm doing with my mornings. So all of this took a lot of driving and a lot of time. And again, it's not, uh, you know, it's not all super wins. Sometimes I roll up on something and it makes my month. Um, but that doesn't happen anywhere near as much as it used to. As I've said before, um, a lot of the old stuff is gone. And so you have to start figuring out places to source. Thrift stores, not very good for um, thrifting vintage anymore, honestly. Um, garage sales still there occasionally but it is very very hit or miss it's not like it used to be when i started doing this in like the late 80s 1990s when i started really collecting myself um you can you can get really good pieces at um like nostalgia shows and antique shows still um for dealers who are buying estates and they're not specializing in this kind of thing you can still pick up bargains there but you're always going to have to pay more um, so it is getting tougher and tougher um, to find this stuff. You do really have to put the effort in. And I don't want to give the impression, because there are a lot of people on YouTube who are like, you can quit your job and go do this, no problem. I do not want to give that impression, um, because it is not easy. Um, it is uh, hard work uh, in terms of the amount of legwork that you have to put into it. And um, it's there's a lot a lot more people um, out there looking and reselling now too which also adds to it you just all you need to do is go back and look at ebay's um own stats of the number of people who are selling on that platform they you can find them it's not hard to find just google ebay uh number of ebay sellers uh over the years and you can see it has gone up by nearly tenfold um over the last probably 10 years um, to the point where it's, again, a eBay, a lot of people complain, oh, it's slow. Well, that's because there's a lot more people on there selling now. Yes, there's a lot more buyers, but there's a lot more people selling. So there's a lot more stuff up there for people to look at. So yeah, not to, you know, put a downer on your day, but just, uh, I want to make sure that people aren't thinking, you know, I'm going to quit my job and do what Jay does because, you know, I love it. You have to be passionate. I was a collector first. Um, and that's the payoff. You get the freedom and you get to go look for cool stuff. And that is the payoff for this. It certainly ain't the money, I'll tell you that. Um, but there you go. That is it for this week. Uh, if you guys uh, have any questions or comments, just feel free to leave them in the comment section there. And I will try to answer them as best as I can. And uh, I wish you guys luck when you are out actually looking this week. Bye.